Good morning. It's Monday, July 30th, I believe. It's the 11th day of Av. And uh, I'm going to give Tad the benefit of doubt. <laughs> a lot of benefit for not much. Uh, it's, uh, it's really doubtful that he'll be coming in on time, so let's give him that benefit. Anyway, uh, we're talking about uh, the Shliach Tzibur. Familiar with the term Shliach Tzibur now? Uh, uh, the the Chazan, yeah. yeah. He's Shliach means messenger. Tzibur means the congregation. That's He's the mean, messenger yeah. for the congregation. That's why it's important that whoever represents the con- c- congregation be somebody worthy. And last week we spoke about the many uh, criteria that's required in order for somebody to be a Shliach Tzibur. Now, there are, many, there are many things we have to be observant when we do a mitzvah. And we should try to do a mitzvah in the best possible way and in the most beautiful way. And there are certain things that the Torah actually emphasizes that it should be done with, with, uh, with an extra effort. For example, the, the most famous one is, is an esrik. The Torah specifically tells you to get a beautiful esrik. That's why people go out and they spend a lot of money on an esrik. Technically speaking, you probably could be yotzu with something like a lemon or something and spend 29 cents. But people spend anywhere from 25 to 20 to 500 dollars for an esrik. Uh, there's also a concept of being what we call a chosid shaita. Don't be an idiot. That's what it really means. Uh, don't go spending your life savings on an esrik. Mm-hmm. Even though I said be, uh, previously that the most you're allowed to spend for a mitzvah, the most you should spend, assuming there is no esriks to be found that cost an arm and a leg, how much you're allowed to spend, it, you're only allowed to, you should only spend 20% of whatever your net worth to do a mitzvah. Nevertheless, somebody is a millionaire. Don't go out. Don't go spend two hundred thousand dollars for Nesser. Give the money to Dr. Buy yourself an Nesser for fifty bucks, or give it to me. Um, having said that, the same applies when you're gonna when you're gonna when you're gonna find a uh, a person that you want to send to be a Schlecht Zibber you got to be careful who you choose and pick somebody who's worthy and who's learned and who has fear of God. Now, what happens if you send somebody and he makes a mistake? He's up there and he says the wrong thing, forgets something, you know, basically does not do a good job. The Torah is very careful not to embarrass him. And it says that don't replace him. In midstream, mm-hmm. yeah, that's going to cause tremendous embarrassment, and and that, you know, to embarrass somebody, the uh, the sages say that whoever embarrasses somebody in public does not have a portion in the world to come, even though it says in the the beginning of chapters of our fathers, Perkei Ovis, something we read during the summer every every Shabbos afternoon, we start off with saying that every person has a portion in the world to come. Just by the virtue of the fact that you're a Jew, you're born a Jew, you automatically have a portion of the world to come. Now, what, what that exactly means, again, we don't know. And somebody has a larger portion, a smaller portion, what does it mean? Is, does it mean more property? Does it mean more luxuries? I don't know what it means. And I, I, I defy anybody to prove to me what it means. But whatever it is, the world to come is a good thing. And we each have a portion there. And, uh, but if you embarrass somebody in public, you lose it. There are very few things that you can actually lose your, uh, your portion in the world to come. Um, morning. So therefore, good morning, Cantor. Therefore, it's very important that uh, you don't embarrass somebody. Having said that, if you have, if you have 
10, 15, 20 people in the room and you're looking to send somebody up and everybody screams, send Moshe, send Moshe, send Moshe, but one person, one person says, uh-uh, I don't want him to go. You can't send that guy because he represents the public, mm -hmm. the congregation. And if the congregation in its entirety doesn't want him to go, if it's, in, if it's not unanimous, he can't go. <laughs> but the person can just say, I don't want him to go because I don't like the color of his shoes. He's got to have a reason. And, uh, and it's got to be a reason which is for the betterment of the community. And if it's a valid reason, again, not to be done in a way to, to embarrass him, but, you know, in a quiet way, you know, pick somebody else. Um, if you're having a disagreement, there are 20 people in the room and 15 people want one person to go and five people want the other person to go and there's nobody else, then we go after the majority. Mm -hmm. But if there is a whole bunch of people who are ready to step up and there's one person that is not desired by an individual, we, can't, we, don't, we don't send them up. This is very difficult to actually put into put into effect and... Uh, Have you ever seen it happen? Uh, I've seen it happen and it was not pretty. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes. good morning, Ted. Good morning. No, it's fine. Good morning. Good morning. So, um, you have to be very careful with those type of things. Now, here's a question. You have two people in the room. You have Cantor Wall. He's hired to do the job to be the Cantor. Okay? And then we have Tad, who voluntarily wants to go up mm -hmm. and be the Schlecht Zibber, assuming he's here on time. Assuming. Uh, who do you think we should give preference to? And I want to hear your reasoning. Why? I think you should give preference to Tad. Because he is someone who's willing to go up there and in hopefully good faith represent the entire congregation. And I think it's a, it's a mitzvah to want to go up and do that. But at the same time, don't go under camp of all wages for not going up. Okay. All right. And by the way, we are assuming that, let's assume he gets paid for that, to do it every single day. So now we have somebody who, out of his own kindness, and, 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 a, and let's say a person who's very worthy, and he, and, he, and he knows how to dive, and at least as good as the cantor, should we give him preference? So what you're saying is very valid, however incorrect. Okay. <laughs> And I'll compare it to something else, and maybe you'll understand it. Okay. Who do you think gets a bigger mitzvah, more reward for doing a mitzvah? Who, who, who is, who's on a higher level? A person who's required to do a mitzvah? Good morning. A person who's required to do a mitzvah and does it? Or a person who's not even required to do it, but does it anyway? I would think the person is not required. Right. So you would think logic dictates that I'm not even supposed to, I don't even have to do this, but I'll do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, let's see if I can come up with a scenario where one person is not, so let's say a woman, a woman is not required to do certain mitzvahs yeah. or anything else. If she does it, she definitely gets reward. Mm -hmm. But does she get more reward than the man or not? So we have a, 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 a rule that Godol Metsuva Vaosa, Mesheina Metsuva Vaosa. That means greater is the person who's required to do a mitzvah and does it than the person who's not required. And I'll tell you, I'll give you two answers why that is so. One is logical. Because if you're not required to do something, 
You ever see people, they can, they can be nicer to somebody else's children than their own children. Yeah. They can be nicer, nicer to somebody else's spouse than their own spouse. They, you know, somebody, somebody will get a flat tire, they'll run out, they'll, they'll do everything in the world, but, the, you know, they're all... Triple A, sweetheart, I'm busy. Right, you know, like, don't bother me, you know, I'm in the middle of, uh, you know, uh, having my coffee at Wawa or something, you know. So the point is that we tend <clears throat> to do things that we don't have to do easier than we, that we do have to do. It's just, just a psych psychological thing. Mm -hmm. If you have the pressure of doing something, you don't feel like doing it, but if you don't have to, you know, like... Let's say yesterday was a fast day. Mm -hmm. it, for some people, it was very difficult not having your coffee in the morning, a whole day going by, not eating or drinking. It's very difficult. And then there are days that you're involved in something and you're, you're, you totally forget. You know what? It comes 5 o'clock in the afternoon. You say, you know what? I didn't, I didn't eat today yet. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even dawn on you because you're not required. Once you're required to do something, it becomes an obligation. It becomes pressure. It's a psychological thing. That's one reason. Okay. The other reason is... And let's go back to the to the Schlich Zibber thing. What time is it? Oh, you, you got ten minutes. minutes. What? You got ten minutes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, the other reason I just realized this thing is not recording. Oh, it is. Hi. Um, is that a person who's hired to do a job? He will do a better job. Why? He's trained. He doesn't want to lose he a job. A commitment. He doesn't want to lose right. his job. Yeah, simple as that. So he's going to be careful to do to do it right. A person who volunteers may say to himself, you know, I don't even have to do this. I'm volunteering, so I, will, you know, I don't have to over... I'll have, I'll I don't have to... Huh? I'll have to answer. Exactly. Okay. I'll uh, delete that from the video. <laughs> we have a seven-second delay. Uh, and that's why also a person who's required to do a mitzvah I have to do this mitzvah. I'm going to be careful that I'm going to do it right. Mm -hmm. A person who's not required to do mitzvah will, will be very, may be lax. And say, you know, I don't even have to do this mitzvah. So if I, you know, I don't do it exactly the way I'm supposed to, I'm still a great guy because I didn't even have, I didn't even have to do this. So <laughs> pat myself on the back. Exactly. So uh, that's why it's, uh, that's why it's important that we should, uh, we should uh, give the preference to somebody always that somebody's required to do it, whether it's the chazan or any other mitzvah. Now, uh, before you walked in, Ted, I was talking about that if, if that everybody has to agree that a person davening by the yom the shlich tzibur, everybody has to agree to want to send them. If there's one person who's not in favor of him, he really shouldn't go. What if it's in a case when... Go ahead. What if... There is an issue where somebody goes up, right, and, you know, 19 people agree. Yeah. But one yeah. knows that this person did something that was so... So horrible that he's, he's not worthy he of not it. Avoid. Is that person liable for going with the masses? Let's say if he says, you know what... Well, again, if he did it because he didn't want to cause embarrassment or okay, cause then a, it's, a, a rip, you know. Yeah, okay, got uh, it. Everything intent... Mm -hmm. is 90% of the law over here. That, that's what rules the day, what your intent is. And uh, Now, what happens in a case it where you have... It could have been that they didn't want to offend his sense of dignity. So exactly, and yeah. we spoke about that, you know, yeah. while you were, whatever you were doing this morning. Um, good, morning. good morning, Rabbi. Morning, so, Rabbi. what happens if nobody wants somebody to go? No, you know, somebody gets out there. Nobody wants him to go, but he pushes himself up there and does. It's amazing that the law is, the halacha is, that if that person davens and starts the brachas, baruch you don't answer amen after him. Really? Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Did you always know this stuff, or did you just study this last night? No, I didn't study this last night. I'm, I'm actually, I don't really prepare for this year. There's certain things that I know and certain know. things that oh. I'm just reading it and then certain things I just make up because it sounds good, you know, <laughs> and I know you guys will laugh, you know. Anyway, now, here's another question. We have a shul and, morning, we have a shul and we need somebody, we need a chazan because nobody's really qualified. The initial, the initial reasons why we had a shliach tzibur a, a chazan is because most people were not either 
versed enough to do it, or they didn't know it by heart and they, we didn't have sitters. It was in times before printing. Mm -hmm. So we had somebody who got up there and represented everybody. And they used to pay him. What if a congregation, think about this for a minute before you give me your knee-jerk answer, what if a congregation has only enough money to hire either a shliach tzibur or a rabbi that's going to teach you Torah and learn with you and give us the laws and everything? One of the two, which one? Say the person with the dollar. Okay, so he did give me his knee-jerk reaction, and what is it? The person with the dollar. The gandab. Okay. And, uh, okay. And you agree or you disagree or you're not sure? I'm not sure. Okay. Well, this depends on the type of rabbi. If he's really a rabbi that, can, that you can learn from him and he is well qualified to guide the congregation in the true, correct Jewish way, you hire him. If it's, eh, you know, a rabbi, a, a, a figurehead type of thing, just to somebody to keep the peace in the shul or somebody to bore a Shabbos afternoon with a speech, you know, that type of a thing, no. Then it's very important to, to have somebody to lead us in the prayer. Um, but learning overrides everything. So, really, if you, you have an extra hour in the day, should you daven extra or should you learn extra? Probably learn extra. You should learn extra. And it's not the daven. Well, the, 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 the morning. Good morning. Shalom Aleichem. Aleichem Good to see you. Likewise. So, Talmud Torah Kineged Kulam. And we say that every morning when it talks about the type of th the things that you have to do or that you do and you get unbelievable reward and it lists a whole bunch of things. One of the things I always like to point out is one thing is coming early to shul in the morning. If you come to shul early in the morning, you're, you're in a separate class. You, you've, you've now gained reward that you can't, even, you can't even get repaid for it in this world. You can only get you can really only get the, the interest on it in this world. The principle, it's like if you, let's say the reward is $10 million, you're not even getting that $10 million. You're only getting the interest on it, the 3%, whatever the bank is paying, and the principle you're getting in the world to come. So one of the things is coming early to shul. And, uh, but having said that, and it lists all the things, giving tzedakah, going to funerals, making a bride and groom happen, visit the sick, be hospitable to your guests. There's, there's the whole list. Are you familiar yeah. with that prayer, both of you? In the beginning. In the I, beginning. I heard that there's a shul that even says a special prayer for the people that don't talk in shul. Yes. Yeah. The Tosfus Yom Tov uh, comprised a Misha Berach that you say after, after you're laying the Torah once a week. They say that Mishaber for all those that don't talk during davening, that they get a very, very special reward and special blessings. We're out on that one. What? We're out on that one. Yeah. Uh, I usually talk while they're making that <laughs> blessing. Right, just to prove a point. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's not, to be, uh, not to be made light of, you know. What talking in answer? shul, talking in shul is not a good thing. No. Uh, if you're talking in shul, uh, things that are required in the shul itself, of course, that's allowed. Uh, but talking about the nonsensical thing, or especially Loshan Hara, is not a good thing. What was the answer to the question that you left us with? Okay, what was that? Uh, oh, I was thinking about this about last time. Uh, the dog morning. And, morning. Uh, you miss what? Yeah, Oh, yeah, and Shabbos. Oh, Shabbos. Yeah. What do you dive in first? Mara or Mecha? When you want to repeat. Okay, so you can't, the, the truth of the matter is that you, you don't do anything. Really? 
Yeah, well, no, don't do it. Uh, it's not a clear-cut answer, and I'm, I'm guilty of not really researching it enough yet. So let's uh, I'll, hopefully for tomorrow I'll yeah, give you a better answer. Week, what? It wasn't just in Shabbos. Okay, during, during the week, week it wouldn't make a difference because it's the same Shemun Esra from Mincha so, so you, you, ju you just do two. Okay. But you know what? It's still something that's worthwhile thinking about. Is the first one you're doing from Marav or is the first one... I would venture to say that the first, you already missed Mincha, okay? So now you're going to do another Shemun Esra from Mincha, not at its proper place. So you may as well do Marav in its proper place. Don't, don't mess up both. Do Marv in its proper place, and then do another one for the one you missed. Okay. Okay. So we'll continue this tomorrow. Thank you. Okay. Bye.